This video will walk you through the updates added to version 2.0 of the official Roll20 5th edition OGL character sheet. There have been several bookkeeping updates intended to make leveling up and other changes much simpler. The inventory management system in the equipment section has been significantly updated. As before, you can find any item from the 5th edition compendium and drag and drop it into your inventory. Something that's new in version 2.0 is that you can now drop the item anywhere on the character sheet, and it will automatically be placed in the correct section, whether it's a weapon, armor, or other type of item. Item attributes are also automatically applied to your character. If you add a weapon, such as a battle axe, the item will be added to your inventory, and the attack will also be automatically added to your attacks and spellcasting section. If you add armor, such as chainmail, your armor class will automatically be updated. If you add ammunition, such as arrows, that resource will also be updated. These entries remain linked, so if you delete the item in either place, it will sync elsewhere on your character sheet. Your inventory will also give you a warning if you have too many items equipped. For example, if you add two pieces of armor, they will both be automatically equipped to your character. You would then receive a warning in red text that you need to unequip one of these items. You can unequip any item by clicking the icon on the lower right corner of that entry. Then simply deselect the equipped option. You can also choose to deselect the use as a resource option if for some reason you don't want to use a set of arrows or other resource. You can also deselect the has an attack option if you don't want to use a weapon for any attacks. If you add a magic item, any effects it might have on your character will also be automatically applied. For example, if you were to add a belt of giant strength to your character sheet, its magical effect of increasing your strength to 21 would be automatically applied. Any attribute that's magically altered will appear in blue text on your character sheet. Similarly, with the 2.0 update, when you add spells from the 5th edition compendium, the character sheet will automatically recognize what level that spell is and place it in the appropriate spot on the sheet. Two new spell icons have also been added to designate ritual and concentration requirements for spells. When you add a spell with an attack, the attack will automatically be added to your attacks and spellcasting section. Just like with items, these entries are linked, so if you delete a spell from your spellbook, the associated attack will be deleted automatically from your attack section. In Tool Proficiencies and Custom Skills, there is now a seventh option in the drop-down menu under Attribute. Instead of simply selecting an attribute to use each time this skill is rolled, you can now select Query Attribute. With this option selected, every time you roll with this proficiency or custom skill, a pop-up window will prompt you to select what attribute you will use to complete the roll. Personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws now have an edit mode. When you have completely filled out these text areas, you can click the wheel on the top right-hand corner of each entry box to save your changes. This will lock the text box and the section will automatically expand to fit the enclosed text. To avoid accidentally opening these fields while clicking around the character sheet, these text boxes will remain locked until you select the wheel on the right-hand corner of the box to re-enter the edit mode. Repeating sections have been added to the Features and Traits section, as well as the other Proficiencies and Languages section. Instead of simple text boxes, you can now add multiple separated entries in these sections. When Features and Traits are added and saved, they will be automatically updated to display attractive text formatting. You can also click the full description of the trait or feature to hide it if your character sheet becomes too crowded. Version 2.0 also adds several updates to the Settings tab of the Character Sheet to allow you to modify the sheet's behaviors to fit your gaming group's playstyle. The default settings in the past has been for all roles to include a second role for advantage. In the Role Queries section under Settings, you can now choose between four options. Instead of Always Role Advantage, you can change the setting to Advantage Toggle, 
which will reveal three new tabs at the top of the character sheet. When you roll with the Advantage tab selected, two rolls will be provided for each check, and the higher result will be highlighted. If the Disadvantage tab is selected, the lower result will be highlighted. The Normal tab will give only one dice roll. If you select Query Advantage under Roll Queries, every roll will prompt a pop-up to determine whether you will roll normally, with Advantage, or with Disadvantage. If you select Never Roll Advantage, your rolls will always give only one dice roll. There are also now four options under the Whisper Rolls to GM section. The default option, Never Whisper Rolls, will reveal your dice roll results to the entire group. If you select Whisper Toggle, two new tabs will be revealed at the top of the character sheet. When you roll with the Public tab selected, your dice rolls will all be public. When you roll with the two GM tabs selected, your dice rolls will all be visible only to the GM. If you select Query Whisper under the Whisper Rolls to GM, every roll will prompt a pop-up to determine whether you will roll publicly or whisper to the GM. If you select Always Whisper Rolls, your rolls will all be whispered to the GM. Another new addition to the Settings section is the Core Die Roll where you can change the default 1d20 that's rolled for most checks in D&D to any other dice option, from 2d10 to 20d4s. While the default proficiency bonus is controlled by your character level, you can change this to the alternate rules for the proficiency die, as explained in the Dungeon Master's Guide. This alternate rule uses a dice roll instead of a static proficiency modifier. You can also set the proficiency bonus to a custom number, whether it's a 2d10 roll or a random number. You can also add global modifiers to your attack, damage, skill, or saving throw checks. For example, if your character was blessed, that spell effect would give you an extra 1d4 to any attack roll or saving throws while it was in effect. Under global saving throw modifier, you would write 1d4. You could also write bless between brackets, so you would see the modifier description in the dice roll breakdown. There are also new options to modify your carrying capacity, spell slots, attributes, and saves. You can now change how your character sheet displays encumbrance and armor class, including disabling tracking of these entirely. Initiative can also now be set to have advantage or disadvantage on initiative rolls. When modifying NPC character sheets, you can still drag and drop directly from the Compendium tab. In addition, you can access the same new toggles for role queries or whisper roles for NPCs. You can also toggle auto damage and whether nameplates for NPCs are visible or hidden. With the updates in version 2.0, creating and updating your player characters and NPCs is even easier. Start a new D&D 5th Edition game today and try it out for yourself. Happy gaming!